Good morning. Well, Jesus back in Galilee. People once again examining who he is and what he's doing. Wondering if he can possibly be the Messiah. People in Jerusalem getting more and more worried about the people gathering and listening to him. Finding out what he's saying. They too have to make a decision. And about this time, John the Baptist, even John, John had been imprisoned by Herod. And in prison, he hears about Jesus and about his ministry. And he too begins to wonder. See, John was, lived a very ascetic life. And when he preached in the wilderness, he preached for repentance. Good old hellfire sermons, you know. Um, you know, you have to do it, you have to do it this way, and the punishment of God, and God's going to deal with anybody who, who is, will not do it his way. And Now he's in prison, and he hears about Jesus going around and mixing with tax collectors and prostitutes and not living the type of life he was expecting. And so John too writes sends to Jesus, and he says, Did I make a mistake? Are you the one? Are you the one we've been expecting? Now, he'd heard the voice of God even. But you see, the people were getting confused. And he too sends to Jesus and says, Are you the one? And Jesus speaks to his disciples, John's disciples, that is, and says, Come and watch for a while. He said, Now go back and tell John what you've seen. He said, The sick are healed, the deaf cure, the lame walk, um, oppressed are set free. He said, go back and tell John, this is why I have come. Reassure him that he did not make a mistake. It's just that my ministry is not the same as his. And my ministry has a different purpose. It's about this time that the authorities in Jerusalem make their final decision. It comes about because Jesus heals a man who was a deaf mute. Remember I said earlier about um, Jesus healing lepers and there was no way lepers could be healed except by the Messiah. Well, they often said as well that you couldn't heal a deaf mute. It was impossible. Only the Messiah could heal a deaf mute. See, the trouble is with the deaf mute, the deaf person can't hear what you're saying can't hear it. No means of communicating with the person. But Jesus heals a deaf mute and suddenly the authorities in Jerusalem realize they've got to make a decision. And they do. And they say quite simply, this man is carrying out all these fantastic signs, but he is not doing it with the power of God. He's doing it with the power of Satan. What a nonsense thing to say. But that's the decision they came to. They could not accept that a man who broke all their rules was so flagrantly dealing with the ways they ate and the way they acted and the people they met with and all their social mores was being almost wiped away. And so they make their final decision. This man is not doing it with the power of God. This man is doing it with the power of Satan. From this moment on, Jesus is in big trouble. Such trouble, in fact, that his mother and his brethren come to him and say, come on, come home with us, get out of this place before they catch you. And from this moment on, Jesus also starts to predict, to predict the fact that one day he's going to be arrested and killed. So he too is quite aware of the decision that has been made. A great turning point in his ministry. And a turning point in another way as well. Because the way he preaches and teaches changes. He starts to preach with parables. In fact, his apostles come after to him after the first parable he ever preaches. He preaches the parable of the sower going forth to sow his seed. And they come to him and they say, why have you changed your form of teaching? 
Why are you teaching in this way? And what does it mean anyway? We don't really understand it. So Jesus explains the parable to them. And explaining it to them, in a sense, he explains all parables. But he shows them how the parable works. He says, quite simply, it comes to you at two levels. First of all, you've got a story. A story which you can repeat. You know, I've been to harvest service, at a harvest service in schools, and we get these young five-year-olds and six-year-olds, I love seeing them do it, coming out and sowing the seed, you know. The story is a simple story. But he says, behind the story, there is a truth. Behind the story. And that truth can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit. And that's the interesting point. He starts to preach at a different level. And they say, well, why are you preaching this way? He said, because people will hear the story and they take it away and they repeat the story. But only those who are born of God will really understand the truth that lies behind it. Amen.